Welcome to Simulator Adventures and welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today I'm having a look at the Blerio, which is a vintage aircraft and quite an important one in the history of aviation. You can get this from the Microsoft Flight Sim uh, Marketplace. It's just under $20. I think it's really worth it. I spent a few hours flying it and this is really some of the most fun I've had in this game uh, since it came out last year. Now, this aircraft is quite important because it was the first aircraft to fly across the English Channel and also it's the first aircraft to use a joystick uh, to control it. Now, these wings here, they've got these cables attached and basically they, as you move the joystick left and right they flex um, to create more lift on one side, less lift on the other and that basically works as an aileron. There's no real aileron, the whole wing is an aileron, it's really really cool. Uh, this one is the standard version of the aircraft. It's powered by a 25 horsepower engine. As you can see, it's I mean it's really basic, but I just such a raw flying experience. You'll see in a bit. It's really really cool. Uh, there are three editions you can or three versions that you can uh, fly that come with the purchase on the store. There's the RIP edition as well, which is like a difficult to fly version, more realistic of what it would been like to fly this in 1909. You're gonna crash it a lot. It's quite difficult to get speed up. Um, and then there's the Gnome variant, which I believe is a rotary powered engine. It's got double the horsepower of this one. I think about 50. And it's quite fast actually, not too bad. It can, you can definitely get through different like levels of cloud and wind, whereas this one will just... Well, I've had to turn the weather off because it's so difficult to fly. Um, anyway, so we are at Chalksole Green Airstrip, which is about 10 kilometers away from the cliffs of Dover. So in 1909, uh, Louis Blériot flew his aircraft across the channel. First aircraft ever to fly, well, first um, heavier than air aircraft to fly um, over the channel, which makes it really, really important in the history of aviation. Anyway, let's get going. So I need to change back to external camera. Now, there are no brakes. That's an important thing. When you land this thing, you realize there are no brakes, only these wheel chocks, which you can't put on. So here's the joystick. Pretty cool. I mean, first aircraft to have it. That's really cool. Now you've got to start the engine firmly, by pulling it firmly, sorry. And there we go. Now, increase engine power. Go, go, go. Ah, missed it. You've got to have the engine power at full to get the engine going. Right, here we go. There we go. Here we go. And we're just going to go straight away. Okay. Picking up speed slowly. Keep it level. This aircraft is definitely best suited to um, landing strips and airstrips, you know. Okay, so there isn't much control of the ailerons. I'm having to use the rudder to turn here. I think I might have made a mistake, actually, because there's these trees. Um, no, we're alright. If we can just get round this tree here. Okay, so we haven't got much power at all. And this isn't even the RIP edition, this is just the basic... Oh my goodness, there's trees coming. So yeah, crashing was very, very common in this. Lots of people that own these died in plane crashes, but this is probably one of the easier planes to fly in the early days of aviation. One of the most advanced and technically um, incredible aircraft. One of, the, one of these aircraft um, from the original production run back in 1909 onwards is currently the oldest surviving flyable or airworthy plane in existence. That's a really cool fact. Um, so as you can see we're doing 25 knots, which isn't very quick, but you know, we're, we're getting along. We're going to fly over to um, Dover Castle and the cliffs of Dover, which is where Louis Blériot first landed when he crossed the uh, English Channel for the first time. Okay. So on the interior, there's no dials, no instruments. All we have is this oil pressure gauge valve, which basically allows us to check whether there's oil flowing through the system, and it's fine for the moment. Uh, we've got a, the Anzani engine, which is a type. I think that's the type of engine we've got. A decompression lever to stop the engine. That's it, really. No flaps. No trim. That's it. Okay. Now recently they did a UK and Ireland world update and it really does look good. Love it. 
I'm not getting as high FPS as I used to get flying over uh, Britain. I'm getting about 40 to 50 on high settings with 1440p. Anyway, here we go. It's very noisy in here. You can just completely see the engine, including the piston movements. And the explosion in the chambers, which is really cool. Uh, looking behind, aircraft made of wood. Really simple design. If you crash this, I mean, there isn't much to protect you at all. But um, as you can see, the wings are flexing there as I'm moving the joystick left and right. Which is such a genius. Now that's full, that's full right on the ailerons. Not much turning ability. The, the rudder really is just very powerful compared to the ailerons. And you'll find yourself using it a lot more than in most of our aircraft. So yeah, this is, this is, I would describe this as a really raw flying experience. You haven't got to worry about radios, GPS, any instruments. Um, the aircraft is difficult to fly, so it provides a challenge, but it's not impossible unless you've got using the RIP edition. Um, it does take some practicing. Landing is very difficult, I'll admit that. But uh, you can pretty much land it anywhere as long as there's flat fields with a good, a good like sort of mile or two length. And setting the aircraft down is fine. You can do that pretty much at the start of any runway. It's stopping. There are no brakes. You just have to cut the engine and hope for the best, really. So here we are. We're coming into Dover. Later on, I'll fly the Gnome edition. I won't fly the R. Well, I'm, you know what? I might try the R.O.P. edition, but... Um, it's good fun, but it's quite difficult. Uh, so here we are, Dover. Now we're gonna we're gonna try and like put it up uh, down near the cliffs, the famous cliffs of Dover. Look at that truck down there. That's weird. There's just a massive truck driving through the housing estates of Dover. That's weird. So we can get up some good speed. That's 50 knots. Not bad. Okay. Wow. We're coming in. Now, I don't know if the uh, Dover Castle is actually properly modelled. I don't think it is. I know that the cliffs of Dover are. But uh, I think Dover Castle is just a sort of, I don't know, like just a generic building. We'll have a look. So for, for a 25 horsepower engine, we're chugging along nicely. It's able to gain height. I mean, we're at 500 feet now. Let's go up, let's go up. You, you've got to climb really gently though, otherwise you will not gain altitude. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Straighting up. Nice. Yeah, nearly, nearly 600 feet. Here we go. It, do, it does climb. It's really cool. Now, when you cut the engine, there is no more power. The engine will just die. You've got to keep it within the green and yellow bits, otherwise the engine will lose all power. I'm going to be honest, Dover Castle from here looks a bit more like the Pentagon than Dover Castle. That's not, that's not brilliant, but you know. I mean, is that Dover Castle or is that Dover Castle there? I don't, I've, I don't know. I've only been to the port of Dover. I've never really been into Dover itself. Okay, so there's a big field over there. We're going to take a, a detour. Have a quick look at uh, the castle. I've lowered the engine power now. Yeah, look at that, the Pentagon. Wow, that's crazy. In fact, I should probably... Come on, engine, let's keep going. We want to go and see the cliff of Dover. 
Hmm, weird. It's, uh... Ooh. There you go, a bit of lag. It sort of looks like a castle, but it sort of doesn't. Like it's got turrets on the top. Wow, that's, uh... That is odd. Very odd for a generic building as well. Anyway. So here's the port. Which does look good, actually. I mean, there's no no ships in the harbour, but other than that, there's ships out at sea. It's pretty cool. And here they are. The cliffs of Dover. I think as we get closer, they will start to look a bit better. I think the uh, the model doesn't load in until you get close. So I can see lots of land here, lots of space. I mean, that would be good there. That little bit there to land. At least I hope the model's going to load in. There you go. Wow, that's weird. Well, it's loaded in anyway. So yeah, look, look at that. Okay, we're going to turn left now. We've seen the cliffs of Dover. And I've seen a space over there, right. I've cut all engine power. Maybe a bit early, uh oh. Come on engine. Okay, it, 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 yeah. I've got it back, right. You see that tree just there, and we're going to aim for that. And then we're going to try and use up all that field. Right, now the engine's cut. Okay, first person. The plane will, like, flip over. Landing was basically the most dangerous thing. The plane will flip over if you are not careful. Um, okay, well, we've really lost engine power now. So, getting close to the ground now. I'm going to make sure we're going slow. Pilot stopped. There you go, right. Pull back, pull back, pull back. If you don't pull back the uh, no, it will basically crash on its nose. Um, and you can use the rudder to kind of slow us down a little bit. There was actually a road there we could have landed on. And we nearly just, just came just for a, a van. Okay. There you go. Um, can we put the chocks on? I don't know, we stopped. Wow. Set the chocks. There you go. Fantastic. Actually, have to... Are they set? Yes. Wow. So now, let's have a quick look at the RIP edition. Um, it is quite difficult to fly. And then we'll have a look at the GNOME version, which is the more powerful engine. Okay, so we're at Papa Westray, and we're going to be flying to Westray. Now, this is currently, I think, the shortest flight in the world. It's just a couple of minutes. Uh, it might take a bit longer in this plane, the RIP edition, the really difficult to fly version. Uh, especially because I seem to have picked a day where it's really windy. Oh dear. Yeah, you're going to see how difficult this is. Okay, right. Now, this runway doesn't look long enough, but... Here we go. This is basically... Everything is more difficult with this. Whoa, and the, and the wind is not going to be... Nah, the, I'm going to have to turn the wind off, I'm afraid. Oh, my. oh no, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Yeah, this might work. Now, the day that uh, Louis Blériot chose to cross the channel was like perfect weather conditions, nearly. Or like the best he could hope for. Um, there was like a competition, I think a newspaper in the UK was running a competition to see who could fly across the channel first. And all the people before him had basically crashed and into the sea. But he managed to cross it in 1909. This is uh, not going very far, so can we turn the weather down? Actually, I'm on live weather, so if I go to scattered clouds, what's that going to do? There you go. This game is beautiful. And a plane like this really makes you appreciate all of the beauty of the game and the landscape, because you can concentrate on it more. There's no distractions, it's just simple flying. Okay, we're getting up to speed now. Now landing, I've never actually managed to land this without crashing it, so 
we're coming right in to the runway. Perfect. What, 45 knots? That's crazy. Okay. So we're about a kilometre out now. I'm just wondering when to cut the power. Because if you're not going kind of in the green area for speed when you land, the plane gets really upset when you land, when you touch down. I don't mean like emotionally, I mean like the whole balance of the plane gets upset. Alright, I'm going to cut the power now. There you go, engines cutting out. We are a quarter of a kilometre, I'd say, away from the end of the runway. Oh no. That's not good. Engine, 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 engine. Okay, just got it back in time. You gotta be really careful that you don't do that. Okay, now cut. Right, here we go, here we go. Ooh. There's touchdown. Oh my goodness. Yes. Oh! I can see myself. Oh, I think uh, there's a small bug with this version. Now nothing is animated. Which is a bit strange, and now I can see the inside of my head, and the inside of my eyeball. But I haven't noticed too many bugs with this, apart from this, obviously, so... That's, that's weird. Anyway, let's move on to the more powerful version. Okay, so I've chosen uh, Lake Geneva to fly the Gnome variant. This is a, a, the Gnome Amiga, I think. It's got a very powerful rotary engine, I think about 70 horsepower. It's really, really cool. Um, I can't wait to fly it, really. So this variant, the GNOME version, was used a lot by military and um, kind of, but yeah, the military. They used it as like spotting planes in the early years of the war. Um, let's take the brakes off, or the chocks, sorry. And this is a Swiss variant, and there's also an Italian variant, which is really cool. Okay. Much more powerful, 60 horsepower. I think or more, there's different variants of this engine, but... Let's uh, keep it in check. Come on, come on, come on. Right. Once you drop it from the ground, you'll start to see how much more power this is. Um... That's tree. Oh dear. What was I saying about more powerful? Uh, yeah, it's not, it's not... Yeah, not brilliant. Okay. Come on. There's an aircraft up there to the right. I love the live traffic in this game. Now if we just build the engine power up, and then release the trucks. Here we go. Keep it, keep it straight. We don't let it go to the right because there's tall trees over there. Okay. Whoa, we're, we're, it's really twitchy on the runway. Up we go. Okay, there we go. Come on, there's no trees there. Go, go, go. You can't, you can't give it too much rudder because otherwise it will just crash. How am I going to get over those trees? There's like a jungle in front of me. I didn't know Lake Geneva had such tall trees around it. I thought it was like surrounded by mountains and stuff. Oh no. Oh no. Right. Two mode. Right, we're up. Wow, what a... Wow, look how fast it's going. 400 knots. There you go. Okay. So that was a successful takeoff. Okay.
I'm going to be honest, when I last flew this aircraft, I remember it being a little bit more powerful. But uh, it is still better than the other one. Just take my word for it. <laughs> okay, so here we are at Lake Geneva. So, that is the Blerio. Just under $20 from the uh, marketplace on Microsoft Flight Sim. As you can see now, this gnome variant is picking up speed nicely. Beautiful landscape we're in. I think I've accidentally still set Dover as a location I need to fly to, which is a bit annoying. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you want to see some more um, Microsoft flights here. Maybe there's a, an aircraft you'd like me to try or some specific region you'd like to fly to. Come and join my Discord server. Where there's a link to that in the description down below. I do monthly giveaways. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon for some more simulator adventures.